It's a tale of two homes in a flood zone. 12 months on from Australia's costliest disaster, one has been raised while the other is back to a functioning family home. We took our cats and our kids and went. Um, two weeks later, uh, we were home again. After her graceful property was badly damaged in 2011, Tifa Newsom became an early adopter of flood resilient design. We didn't want to leave the suburb. We had tried to find somewhere else to live before the flood and couldn't. Um, so we chose to make the house resilient uh, because we knew that it was going to happen again. When flood water hit again last year, it took just a pressure wash to move back in. So it came as a surprise when she received an $18,000 insurance bill in December. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I was like, well, I'll just put the money in my bank account and abandon ship on all insurance policies. Her insurer dropped the bill by 70% when she pointed out the property's design features. Her architect says builders and insurers need to better recognise the value of disaster resilient homes. It's such a huge undertaking to shift an entire industry, um, so that will take some time. He'd like to see all new homes built to the standard. In the last year we've seen a huge upswing in requests for our services. The Brisbane Council area faced the biggest damage bill of all local governments during last year's floods. In September, it updated its flood map to include more homes and suburbs. Now, more than 49,000 properties are included. For Tifa Newsom, her long-term investment has paid off. I don't think it costs that much. I think it costs more to replace the house over and over than doing it once and doing it well. Jemima Burt, ABC News, Brisbane.